16-year-old Ishalini, who was employed at MP Rishad Badiuddin's residence, died on the 15th of July at the Colombo National Hospital after she was admitted with burns suffered at the parliamentarian's house. The post-mortem examination identified the cause of death as shock induced by an infection of the wounds suffered as a result of the burns. However, a second post-mortem was conducted after Charlene's remains were exhumed on the 30th of July by a special three-member committee comprising of senior judicial medical officers. Four persons were arrested in the aftermath of her death. MP Badiuddin's wife, father-in-law, brother-in-law and the middleman who supplied the Charlene to the Badiuddin household were taken into custody and remanded until today. When the case was taken up before the Colombo Magistrates Court today, Deputy Solicitor General Dilip Papiris, appearing on behalf of the police, told the court that Ishalini has been put at a great disadvantage since facts unearthed during investigations are published in social media, even before they are reported to court. The Colombo Additional Magistrate, Rajendra Jayasure, then ordered the IGP to investigate as to how these facts are being leaked to social media and produce a report to court. The Deputy Solicitor General added that a suspicion still remains whether Ishalini's death is a suicide, an accident or a murder. He went on to say that when Ishalini was hospitalised, a sub-inspector at the Borella Police, identified as Sriaratna, had approached her and had asked as to what happened and Ishalini had been in severe discomfort at the time. Further, the sub-inspector had videoed the interaction. When pursuing the footage, Deputy Solicitor General said that Ishalini responded with great difficulty, saying things such as, don't hit, remove the phone. Earlier, the police had reported to court that an individual clad in attire similar to that of a police uniform had exerted influence on Ishalini's mother and her brother when they visited the Badiuddin residence following Ishalini's death. The individual had told the duo not to take the matter to the police and to end it then and there. Deputy Solicitor General Dilip Papiris told the court today that an investigation was launched into this individual in question and he is identified as Chief Inspector Lafar, attached to the police headquarters. He made evident that this Chief Inspector of Police had been in the security detail of MP Badiuddin when he was a minister. The Deputy Solicitor General noted that although Charlini, engulfed in flames, had made it to the door of the kitchen from her room and had run a considerable distance through the corridor to the living room, it is quite amazing that the goods nearby had not sustained any fire damage. He also cast suspicion whether the suspects had destroyed any evidence of the crime scene since no external evidence of a fire was found at the crime scene. He went on to say that it is a doctor named Randika who had made a note saying that Ishalini set herself on fire upon her hospitalization. While noting that the relevant doctor is presently overseas, he said that the investigators are focused on obtaining a statement from him via Zoom. He also made evident that none of the doctors had made a note saying Ishalini was of sound mind at the time of her hospitalization. The Deputy Solicitor General added that when the police recorded a statement from MP Badiuddin on Saturday, he had denied knowing much about Ishalini. The legal counsels representing the defendants, meanwhile, noted that the court has the power to grant their clients bail over the accusations levelled against them and thus sought bail for their clients. Colombo Additional Magistrate Rajendra Jayasuriya, however, refused bail for the suspects and instead ordered their remand until the 23rd of August. Glow and handsome. A the multivitamin sa UV filters degunekin vadi deep the aklabade. Unagana hitan. Hirukirin araksha karagan. 